G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday morning here in Australia, so that's Saturday evening over in the States. Things are a little bit sideways. Again, Bitcoin's been rejected at that kind of 60,000. We were getting almost to 60,100. Uh, we got a rejection and now we're just sitting under that 60,000. But look, 50, sort of 8, 59,000, even sort of 57,000 a bit. They're strong support levels at the moment. As soon as Bitcoin drops down there, it's getting bought up immediately. So the bears aren't able to push it lower. The bulls just aren't able to push it higher at the moment. Things are really kind of sort of evened out. But again, this never lasts forever. Eventually something happens. And considering, you know, most people believe that we're still in a bull market, there's a good chance that this is going to bounce to the upside. But that's not a guarantee. That is not a guarantee at all. We absolutely could have a 30, 40% correction from here. It's possible. It's just, you know, what's the probability of it? And I would say it's pretty low at the moment, but not impossible. And that's just something we always need to keep in mind. So again, Bitcoin under uh, 60,000. Ethereum, I think that might be price discovery right now. 2100, uh, looking very nice, but has had a little bit of a pullback. Binance coin. Good Lord, that's going to be $500 in no time. I bought that for 40, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, and I sold it all, but you know, for a nice profit. Uh, XRP, wow, have a look at that. It's on an absolute tear. Now, I think it's probably made support above uh, its old BTC level. So now is uh, a time where I might look at getting into it. I'll have to go back and have a look at the charts, but I spoke about that yesterday. But I want to see the weekend retracement that'll probably come tomorrow, uh, States time. Uh, sorry, tomorrow, uh, which will be Sunday in the States. It'll be sort of Monday here in Australia. If we have a, you know, a reasonable weekend retracement, does XRP just fall right under that support or does it hold that support? If we can hold that support, I might start looking at getting back into XRP because it's doing quite well at the moment against the dollar. But again, it's only getting to old support. It hasn't really you know, smashed its old BTC level. All right, but look, things are looking pretty green here. Now BTC dominance uh, getting lower, so we're nearly under 53% now. So the altcoins are continuing to grow. ETH dominance, uh, I think that's rising a little bit. I think it was 11.1, 11.2%. 11 so now back up, back up at 11.7%. And gas, 80. Oh, we haven't seen that in quite a while. I think the lowest I've seen gas for quite some time was about 77. So we're almost at those lowest prices. Very, very interesting. All right, bit of a mixed bag in the last hour or so. We got some red, but really everything else looks pretty green. And again, that's what makes me think tomorrow, uh, Sunday American time, Monday Australian time, we might have a bit of a pullback. And that might be a good buying opportunity. Might be. Again, never financial advice. You make your own mind up. I'll definitely be having a look tomorrow and just sort of seeing, you know, what of the coins that I like, like I said, you know, the graph and things like that is looking uh, quite nice uh, and that I want to buy. And it might not even be the graph. I might, you know, find some other random thing that I've never bought before that I've been looking at that looks really good. But tomorrow could be a good buying opportunity. But let's have a look. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? What's done well? All right, XRP, there we go, as we were speaking, uh, done quite well. Stella, nice reserve. VeChain has been doing quite well for quite some time now. And Litecoin, very nice. I still think $360 was its old all-time high. So Litecoin still undervalued. The graph, there we go, spoke about this yesterday, making some moves. Uh, Elrond, something I've liked that I never got into, but again, I think I may have missed that. Uh, look. Plenty of green there. Only a couple of really good ones. And again, so there's maybe four what I consider really good ones in 24 hours. And the others are just okay. But again, we never complain about, you know, a gain period. Even if it's a small gain, it's still a gain. But what about losses? Has there been anything that really hasn't done well in the last 24 hours? In the top 100 anyway. Pundi X, old, come down again. They had such a run up. They're always going to pull back. Uh, and normal Pundi X has done something similar as well. All right. Holo, Wank, Cycoin, Dent, a basic attention token. No real major losses though. I mean, Pundi X, uh, you know, I consider them sort of reasonable, not reasonable, uh, you know, on, on the good side. But, you know, 
again, yeah, fifteen percent over twenty four hours. That's a reasonable size loss, not in the good sense though. Uh, and fifteen plus percent gains, I call that a good reasonable gain as well. So I think the gains far outweigh the losses, and that is shown in the market cap. Now this was uh, two trillion and eighty five billion. Uh, and now it's 83 billion. So we have lost a little bit there, $2 billion. But again, that's more in the hourly. That fluctuates fairly well. You've got to wait 24 hours. And again, tomorrow is the day that I'm looking for. Is that Sunday correction, are we done with that? Or is that just set to continue? All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin dominance chart. All right, so here's something that... Uh, you know, has been forming as well. I did say we've been kind of ranging for a while. Well, this is forming its own little wedge here. You know, these lows continue to get higher and these highs are getting lower and now it's just in a wedging pattern. And we can see we wicked out and now it's sitting right on that line. It is just coiled up super tight at the moment. And so what I would be expecting is, you know, on this chart really in the next few days and have a look at that it almost peaks out at about the 17th of april you know maybe sort of the 18th 19th but what's coming on the 14th the coinbase ipo that really could be so just about here the catalyst to change things to really you know push this market into the next big leg up but look it might not be as well we just need to keep that in mind all right so we spoke about this XRP, its price has risen 30% to $1.30 in a mad weekend dash. So, you know, there's been some, you know, somewhat good news uh, on the front for Ripple with the SEC uh, court case and all of that. And is that fueling it? Or is this just simply part of the market? And does the market even care about um, the SEC? I mean, it obviously did. There was a big sell off of XRP for a while. And look, I'm going to put my hand up. I was guilty of that. I sold pretty much all my XRP. I did keep a small bag, a very small bag. Uh, and look, it's hurting at the moment, but really, uh, that XRP would not even have 5x for me because I, I was buying XRP right up till I think about maybe 70, 80 cents. So that XRP really hadn't done too well. And the money uh, that I took the XRP that I had uh, and sold and I invested into other coins has far uh, out surpassed what XRP would have done for me. So, you know, like I said, I'm waiting to see if XRP can hold this BTC level uh, that I showed in the chart the other day. If it can, then I'll probably look at getting back into XRP. But if it can't, and this is just a bit of a fake out, then that's just the way it goes. I'll just leave it at that. All right, HSBC, this is really sad. So HSB changes crypto policy. It's now barring its clients from buying stocks of companies that hold Bitcoin. So I'm guessing they're saying you can't buy Tesla, you can't buy uh, Me Too, you can't buy MicroStrategy. This is again, this is just the old guard trying to stop, you know, the new thing. They can see it coming, they're not ready for it, they're not prepared for it. They feel like they haven't been able to build a good enough position and it's probably too overpriced for them at the moment or they just simply don't trust it. And so now they're trying to, uh, you know, slow this freight train down. But that's exactly what it is. It's a freight train. You're not going to stop it. It is too late. It is done and dusted. Bitcoin has solidified itself. I mean, it's been solidifying itself for over a decade now. But not only that, cryptocurrencies are... Uh, they just are the way of the future. There's going to be digital dollars. Pretty much everything's going to be on the blockchain. And I just cannot understand why HSBC would do this. But this is the path that they've decided to uh, go down. And all right, so be it. Good luck to them. I think it's likely going to hurt them uh, in the long run. Uh, yeah, disappointing and very disappointing for anyone who's with HSBC. And I'm glad to say that I'm not because this is yeah, extremely disappointing from them. You know, they can have their opinions about blockchain and they probably don't hate blockchain, but, you know, about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. But, you know, to stop other people buying them, yeah, yeah, very disappointing. All right, and last but not least, so we were talking about Filecoin the other day uh, and it's been forming a nice base and it slowly started to make some moves. Is this maybe part of it? So Filecoin sudden rise to the top top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap, uh, however, however brief, points to its potential as it's driven by community in China. So China based, but that's all right. Filecoin was, is one of the most prominent coins in the storage sector of cryptocurrencies. 
In the past month, the price and market capitalization of Phil has rocketed to new highs. On April 1st, the coin reached $233. It's not there now, along with breaking into the top 10 cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. Basically, Filecoin is a decentralized cloud-based data storage network that allows its users to gain rewards on selling their excess storage on an open source platform. Filecoin is made by Protocol Labs. Although Phil's stint in the top 10 list was short-lived, it's important to note that the Filecoin's fully diluted market capitalization hit a high of $450 billion. This is nearly half of the allowed $1 trillion mark that Bitcoin recently held for 10 days in a row. In the last 30 days, Filecoin has posted unprecedented gains from around 440% from trading around the $42 mark to trading to $184. Even though the price has dropped around 20% from its all-time high on April 1st, the fact that it has settled at three times the price before the surge itself is an incredible feat. So I really like Filecoin and what they're doing. And, you know, some people are going to be, oh, it's a Chinese thing and, you know, get all funny about it. Look, China built heaps of great stuff. That's just a straight up fact. You don't have to like that they're a communist regime and all the rest of it, but they still build really, really good stuff and some really good quality stuff. Not everything's quality over there, but not everything's quality from anywhere. So for me, I love Filecoin. I love what they're all about. And I've really enjoyed the price gains and I am looking to probably add to more file my Filecoin portfolio. Just going to have to wait and see if it has you know, actually settled or is there still another leg down. And if there's another leg down, then maybe it's not the best buy at the moment. But again, I'll just keep an eye on it. All right, that's it for me. Just a quick one. Sunday morning here in Australia, there's generally not a whole lot of news that you get about cryptocurrencies on a Sunday and a Saturday for that matter. It goes pretty quiet. It's more once, you know, Monday sort of opens up, then you get a whole stack more news. And we looked at the charts yesterday. So that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.